Hey everybody, it's Jesse, and um, today we have some pull requests to go over, and have to make a decision for sure this time of uh, whether we're going to use the beta material UI or not. I know you're probably tired of <laughs> even thinking about this question at this point. Um, also, I um, today has been... <laughs> Today and last night have been really, really frustrating. So um, since my my whole purpose for doing this, at least at first, was to give people a realistic view of what my job as a front-end developer is like, I'm going to briefly explain <laughs> what, what the day has been like, uh, just to give you a more accurate picture. Uh, so... As you know, uh, I'm working on the Udacity uh, React Nano Degree. So I um, I keep submitting my project, and the way it works in Udacity is you submit your project, and then they do a code review, and then they send you feedback on your code and let you know uh, if it's if it's working properly or not. So. It, um, it hasn't been working properly. And the first you know, two times I submitted it, I'm like, oh, okay, you know, that's legitimate. It's some good feedback. Should have tested it more. Uh, but then last night, I, I thought I had it. I, I thought I had, had gotten it. And so I, I was frustrated. So I stayed up late last night and I worked on it. And then I thought, for sure, I have it this time. I woke up this morning and I still didn't fix what I needed to fix. I fixed some of it, uh, but there was still you know, one thing that I didn't test and it didn't work. So that was just super frustrating, <laughs> uh, especially because I'm so tired today since I stayed up late to do that. But anyway, that's not, that's not even the worst part. Uh, so I get to work, I start doing my work uh, it gets right around time when I have a meeting right before my lunch break. So instead of going to the meeting, I just uh, kind of remote it in uh, right from my office. So there was like a screen share thing set up. So I remote it in late because I had just gotten an email from a client that their site was down, which was really worrying because I set up that site in a similar way to what we did this this Catechetical Institute site the last time. So I checked it out and it turns out they had like a spike in in traffic and uh, the database just shut down on the uh, server that was running WordPress. So I couldn't figure it out, couldn't get it up and running. Um, spent my entire lunch break that I was going to spend working on Udacity on that. Luckily, I still had the development version of that WordPress install on a different server. Uh, so one, one that I pay for, not the company. Uh, so I just pointed the subdomain to that server so that the site is now back up. And it buys me time to figure out what happened with that. So I'm, I'm really interested in what happened because I don't want it to happen to any of the other sites that I built like that. So on top of that, I get an email from somebody who's uh, been continually insisting that a site that I had built, an internal site for, for uh, the university I work for, they couldn't access it. Uh, so it is, you have to log into the site. And uh, I can't, I've been trying to actually go to see this person at their computer and uh, they've never given me a time when I could go to see them. Uh, They've had other people from the IT department go there who, of course, haven't been able to fix it because they're, they're not developers and the problem is likely, you know, maybe some type of error. I don't know. I don't really know what the problem is. So I get another email from this person saying they tried to log in and it didn't work. So I check my error logs. I'm not 100% sure yet. I'll give you an update on this when I know for sure. But this is what I saw when I checked my error logs. Around the same time that I got the email about the error, I got this error log. And just I just want to zoom in on this part. 
So, uh, in, in case that's not immediately sinking in, whoever got this, this error was using Internet Explorer 9 to try to view my site. Now, I don't, I don't know about you if you all support Internet Explorer 9 in your projects, but I make no attempt to support Internet Explorer 9. And um, so that was just... If it turns out that this was, in fact, the error message from the person who was trying to log in, uh, I'm going to be... <laughs> I'm going to be somewhat relieved and really annoyed at the same time. Uh, not at this person at all. I mean, um, certainly, you know, I think most people probably don't even realize what version of a browser they're using. But I will be super annoyed that for months now I've been trying to figure out this problem. And it's potentially not even really my fault. It's, it's just the fact that it's, you know, it's Internet Explorer 9. So anyway, uh, that's been my day so far. But then after all that happened, my wife brought me pizza, which was cool. And I got to see the baby for a few minutes. Uh, and she was being really cute. So uh, so anyway, so that brings me <laughs> to right now. And uh, I'm going to show you the, uh, the pull request that I got. And uh, we have some cause for celebration today, and I'll show you in, in a minute. Um, yeah, Sebastian says in the live chat, pizza fixes everything. So, yeah, it was it was good. As you know, I frequently uh, just work and don't eat all day. Uh, so it is really nice when I actually eat. <laughs> uh, I feel a lot better. Usually towards the end of the stream, I'm just exhausted and hungry. Uh, but today I will not be. All right, so let me let me show you. I was just trying to think if I forgot anything. I don't think so. All right, let me show you this pull request that I just merged into the Material UI Beta branch. So uh, this is from uh, Rohit, and uh, sorry if I'm mispronouncing the name. But I just wanted to especially show you this because this is uh, his first uh, pull request uh, that's been accepted. So you can check it out. Uh, this was the first pull request. And um, does it show up that, he ex that I accepted it? I don't know. But anyway, I think... I think that this is the first pull request that, that he's had um, submitted uh, that's been um, accepted. So that's really cool. So congratulations. Uh, so basically what, what he's managed to do is to get this site. So obviously it's, it's not uh, perfect. Like there's still some weird things going on uh, probably based on the markup that I had. But the, the point of the pull request was to fix those errors. So this is no longer showing any errors. All right, I still need to get this working uh, in terms of the side nav and you know, fixing this positioning and things. But yesterday we worked and worked and we couldn't even get to a point where we could even see anything except an error message. So this is awesome. Uh, so this actually makes it more of a possibility that we could use the beta. Um, I still kind of don't want to after yesterday because that was a lot of work. So if I run into similar issues, I, I don't really want it to slow me up. I'm already, a, I'm, I actually expected to be a lot farther along at this point than I am. So anyway, so I went ahead and merged it into that, that Material UI beta branch just so that it's there because, you know, maybe in a few days we realize that the other version of Material UI is just going to be too hard to work with for what we want to do. And I want to try it again. Uh, or maybe down the road, you know, if I, I go to redo this again, maybe I'll want to use Material UI Beta. I mean, who knows? But uh, I thought it was worth it to have a, on this branch a version that didn't throw errors immediately. I never really liked the idea of pushing to GitHub uh, a branch that 
didn't work. So thanks again, uh, Rohit, for that uh, for that pull request. And uh, he actually submitted two pull requests. So the first one was a theme fix, but at least for me, it threw an error. Uh, and I think the only thing was it was just it had a lot of stuff from the master branch that it wasn't uh, the beta, so it just wasn't working right. And then, you know, almost immediately after I made some comments uh, on the first pull request, he came back with this with this second one. So that was really awesome. Um, oh, hey, cool, Rohit's um, in the live chat, so, and says, thank you so much for accepting the pull request. You're welcome. Thank you uh, for submitting that. I'm, I'm actually, I'm really, I'm excited for two things. One, that you submitted the pull request, and it was awesome. Also, that it's your, your first pull request. I think it's really cool that I got to, um, uh, to accept that. Like, that, that's a big deal to me. All right, so I'm going to check the live chat quickly just to say hi to everyone. All right, so if you're, um, if you're new, welcome. And uh, thanks for, for watching. So uh, this, this show, uh, in case you haven't watched before, is me doing my normal everyday work. So there will be mistakes. And some days it seems like it's all mistakes. Uh, but we usually manage to work through the problems eventually uh, and build some cool things. Uh, so I'm going to try to keep up with the live chat, and every so often I'm going to check back in. So if you ask a question I don't get to it right away, uh, please don't, don't be upset by that. I will get to it. And uh, if you can't stick around, I'll still try to answer it. You can watch the recording later uh, and get the answer. Uh, so basically, uh, if you haven't seen the other sh streams for this project, we're building a React project. We use Create React app to build it, uh, you know, to start it. And then we're using Material UI, which is a material design uh, framework uh, for, uh, for building the layout uh, in React apps. Uh, so this is my first time using Material UI. So we're still, we're kind of learning as we go. Um, also, there's uh, two other ways to participate in this stream today. So of course I have the Instagram feed that is showing my face whenever I'm, uh, whenever I'm doing this. And I have a, a cool, um, you can barely see it in the background, but today I turned on my little uh, plasma ball, a USB plasma ball. So <laughs> I guess if it was darker, you could see it more. But anyway, it's cool. My kids always like to play with it when they come to my office. Um, so if you are already watching on Instagram and you don't realize that you can see the code on YouTube, check out Free Code Camp's YouTube channel. And then there's a third way. So I mentioned that I had um, Ngrok working. So let me give you the link. And you should be able to see the site as I am developing it. So I'm going to paste this link in the live chat. But if you're not in the live chat or you're watching this later on, which I'll probably keep Ngrok on. So there's a chance if you're watching it a little bit later on today, you can still see the site, but it won't be on all the time. So if you are watching it later and it doesn't work, then my computer's off or something uh, but otherwise you know you might have a shot if you're watching maybe an hour or two after so um, here's the link in the uh, live chat um, Blake asked about the Instagram feed uh, it's sh there should be a link in the description to this video my Instagram name I think is Jesse dot Weigel so cool I can see that um, you all are actually trying to, to view this, so that's awesome. So if you remember, we tried to do this maybe a month ago, maybe more, and um, it just immediately like shut down because we hit the limit on the amount of requests. Uh, so I explained a few days ago, I think, that um, the uh, person who does Ngrok, and I think his name's Alan, 
let me double check. I, I want to give um, this guy credit because I really appreciate it. So I'm I'm actually going to check my my email right now to make sure that I get his name right. And um, I'll probably put something on Twitter too, thanking him since that's how he first reached out to me. Um, I think it was Alan. Yeah. So Alan Shreve. Uh, who is, uh, I, I don't know if he's, I don't know exactly what he is with Engrok. If he made it, if he's in charge of, of maintaining it, I'm not sure. But anyway, uh, he basically just hooked us up saying, you know, th this will work. So I don't know what he set the limit to, but it looks like it's working fine. Uh, I haven't, normally I would have gotten a message that say it, said it crashed. Okay, so right now we got a lot of connections and it seems to be working. So, um, so that's, that's awesome. So now uh, I'll run this, you know, whenever, pretty much anytime I stream, and uh, you all can uh, just immediately see the feedback of what's going on. So that should really help. You know, you, got, you can open up dev tools now and see the same errors and inspect things, and uh, you won't have to just see what's on my screen. Uh, so hopefully that'll make this way more interactive. I mean, there's already a lot of interaction in the live chat, and that's awesome. But uh, I think this was this was a really really good idea. I think it was Fabian's idea a while back. So Fabian hasn't. I don't think he's been able to to join in in the uh, live chat for a while. I haven't seen him. I might have seen him last week or something. But uh, so he's probably not watching now. But. If he does watch this, thank you for this idea. It was really awesome. All right, so uh, enough of all the uh, the introductory stuff. I'm going to switch. For now, uh, I think I'm going to switch back to the master branch. Um, so like I said earlier, I'm, I just, I don't want to, to um, do anything with the beta right now. Uh, so it was really... I don't know. It, it was really a, like a little bit frustrating yesterday when um, I tried to work on it and we just couldn't get it working. So I don't want a repeat of that. So I'm going to switch back to the master branch. Uh, yeah, let me do this on the screen so I can see this. So, um, so if you're not that familiar with Git, you want to switch branches. You do Git checkout and then you do the name of the branch. Okay, so now I've switched to the master branch and I want to make sure because I don't think I've done pushed anything up oops <laughs> git pool not master pool that was <laughs> all right so git pool so it's always fresh whenever you start out it, you always want to do a git pool just in case even if you're the only person working on it it's possible that you might have pushed something from another computer and you just forgot that's actually happened to me that's happened to me during the live stream because uh, I frequently work on a, uh, a laptop when I'm not in my office uh, so let me move this out of here and let's see I'm gonna run yarn just to make sure the packages so I have different packages switching back and forth between branches and let me restart this server as well so it's it's showing an error right now that's why I'm doing all this so that should fix it alright so here we go uh, we're back to this. We have uh, this uh, little highlight here working uh, thanks to Sebastian's pull request. Uh, everything that's showing up here is a different component. Uh, so, you know, as it should be in React, you know, all these little pieces that you see are all separate components. Uh, so, th you know, this app bar is separate, and then we the side nav is, is all separate, and then this section here is totally separate. So, that's the way we want it. 
so now I think we ought to build out the uh, the home view. Uh, so why not why not start there? That's the first page everyone will see. So uh, we'll start right there. And um, let me see. Thing. I guess we could change the title too. That's the only other like really obvious thing that we could change because it's obviously not going to be title. Uh, so let's um, yeah, let's change that. I want to start out with a win. I know if I change that, it won't cause an error, and uh, that'll be one one thing that we can say. Even if everything else fails, at least we got that done. Uh, so, where am I at? Is it side nav? <laughs> now that everything is in components, I'm not sure where it, <laughs> where the title is. Alright, app bar, there we go. <laughs> I'm pretty sure I made this component, so... Maybe I didn't. Maybe that's why I didn't realize. Maybe this is the one Sebastian made. Um, oh, wait a second. It should not be like this. Let's see. I think it's... Uh, is it holding on? I'm going to close out a bunch of this stuff. Occasionally, uh, when I check out and switch from a branch, the uh, code editor doesn't immediately switch everything over, and it holds on to the um, to the old markup. So, in particular, for that one. It was still showing the code uh, that we weren't even using anymore at all. So let's try. I think it's side nav. Yep, that's it. So it's in side nav. This this makes more sense. This is how it should look. All right. So let's change it to resource center. And I think Sebastian also submitted a pull request, uh, but he basically said uh, in the the comments for the um, for his request that it would probably just be better to go with a stable version. So that's why I didn't even I didn't I didn't pull it in. Um, but I think he actually did change the title. At least I thought he did. I don't, maybe maybe he didn't. I don't know. Now that I look at it on my other screen, I don't see that. So I don't know where I'm getting that from. All right, so let's check it out. Hey, it says Resource Center. Awesome. Okay. Um, so since we don't have column classes built in to... Uh, the uh, the material UI the version of material UI that we're using I I kind of think we should I think we ought to use some of the stuff from materialize because we're already familiar with that so here's what I'm thinking that we could use assuming that there's not a lot of conflicts between class names which we'll have to double check that. We may be able to just blend these two, not use any of the um, any of the jQuery related stuff or JavaScript related stuff at all from Materialize, uh, but basically just take their column classes and use that. So if there's any objections to that, let me know. I just would rather not have to build out a column class system if. I don't have to, like from scratch, uh, because I already know how ma the materialized system works. I'm really familiar with it. All 
Okay. I just checked back in the live chat and I see Sebastian saying, please change the active color. Patrick asks, please tell me that bright yellow is a placeholder. Yeah, yeah, the bright yellow. <laughs> <laughs> the bright yellow is definitely a placeholder. Uh, tor, uh, I don't know if it's supposed to be Tor, Torre, I don't know, but it says maybe you should create two folders, component and container, to store your code. Yeah, actually, I had, um, I had created um, component folder when I was trying to get the beta to work, and um, so. I obviously that that didn't happen. So I do I am going to create a folder to hold the components and organize this a little bit better. Uh, so like I said, I had done it once and then broke everything. So that got thrown out when I threw out all the things that broke. All right, I was just checking the live chat there, so sorry about the uh, little silent time. Oh, cool, Patrick said, uh, I love that hot reloading is even working over uh, ngrok. Uh, yeah, I didn't, I, I figured it would work. I wasn't really sure what to expect, but so far this seems like, really really useful all right so uh it seems like no one wants this bright yellow there so let's change that so i guess we're in the app.css yep all right so we don't want that to be yellow let's check out the material design documentation and see what it's supposed to be um I can never I'm on the site often but I don't know why the uh, URL doesn't come up when I type it in okay so let's see cool this is what I wanted I just wanted to get this uh, it, the material design documentation seems to actually use the material design uh, spec which is as it should be, I suppose. So I'm not even really going to look this up. I'm just going to inspect it and see what color they use. That will be faster. Let's see. Why is this not? Oh, okay. When I uh, I have it on on the other screen, I um, had taken it took the focus off, so I couldn't see. Uh, but this is pretty easy. It's just using this gray. Let's see how that looks. Cool. All right, much, much nicer uh, to look at, and that's actually a different gray than what we see when we hover. So, does that bother anybody? That gray is different. I mean, should it be different since a different thing is happening, or should we try to make it the same? I don't really care at this point. I can always change that later on. Uh, but let me know what you think if you if you have a preference Okay, cool, so we Got the important things taken care of a title and we have a new color for the active link. So let's uh, Let's commit that so we have one working commit So let's check our status and see We've edited the app.css file and the sidenav.jss file, and I want to commit both of these at the same time uh, with a commit message, and we're going to add them uh, as well. So to do that, we're going to type 
git commit. And then we're going to give it the flag am. So a is going to add it. And m means we're going to put a message right after that. So within quotation marks, and you could do double or single quotes, uh, we're going to put our commit message. And we're going to say change title and So uh, there are actually uh, different, I guess, different ways to do um, commit messages. So uh, different places have guidelines for how you do it. So right now, I'm not really using any guidelines except that uh, I don't do anything in the past tense. So I don't ever say change title. It's always change title. Uh, so that's pretty much what, what I adhere to. I also try to keep them as short as I possibly can. And I usually don't use punctuation, but sometimes I forget and just put in a punctuation mark. Uh, but if you want to use something that's standard, and I mean, if you're just starting out and you want to start with good habits, you can check out, um, I think uh, Udacity has their own standard. So you can go, um, I'm, I think it's available somewhere on the site. I don't, I don't know what the link is. Uh, right now but if you check out the Udacity uh, get you know commit message standard it's pretty straightforward um, if you're taking Udacity course they want you to stick to it and I'm sure there are other uh, companies that have their own standards so I would actually recommend doing that so your commit messages are more uniform because mine are are not <laughs> they're all over the place uh, at some point I'll probably have set a standard for everybody in my department uh, to use and potentially like everybody who uh, contributes to any of the projects but for right now <laughs> there is no standard and let's push this so we've committed this so this is only on our local machine if we want this to be to be reflected in github we got to push it so we do a git push origin master since we're on the master branch and now this change is reflected in github which is awesome because you know if the power goes out and this computer shuts down uh, we could just turn on our laptop and um, run Wi-Fi from our phone and get on github and uh, keep working I've actually done that before. I don't know. Has that ever happened to you all? Like I keep my laptop here, and so uh, the power has gone out and shut the computer down. So I just open my laptop and keep going. <laughs> all right. So Zach says it's different, and he gives he gave me the uh, hex code for the uh, color that's the, the real color so all right so uh, because you you were nice enough to give me the color I'll change it right now so that we have the same color let's check it out now why is it not working oops did I mess it up wait a second that is not that's not the color. <laughs> that is blue. <laughs> oh, cool. Nathaniel says, um, Back when I lived uh, in Snowden land, Elizabeth City, power outages were a more common thing, so I used mobile tethering in my laptop. <laughs> Zach says, sorry, wasn't the color, just my favorite one. That was a good color. I mean, I like that color. It's just not in the uh, color palette that I can use for university projects. Actually, if you don't mind, I think I may try that color out on my my project for Udacity. 
because I'm I wanted to use a blue color. I picked a different shade, but I really like that shade. So maybe I'll maybe I'll use it. I don't want to steal your color though, because you 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 put it in the chat first. So I think you have dibs on it for a while at least. All right. So now let's let's start with. Um, some of these classes. I guess the first thing I want to do is I just want to look, uh, and this is just on my other screen briefly, at some of the class names that are coming out just to see about conflicts. So let's look. I have the material UI documentation here as well. We'll see. Actually, let me close that. <laughs> I had to do a uh, performance management self-assessment, so I think I have a meeting on Friday. Actually, uh, I should let you all know, Friday I'm going to have to stream at a different time, and tomorrow I will. So tomorrow, at a normal time, I'll be finishing up a technical interview with a candidate uh, for web developer job. So I'll probably just bump it ahead to like 2.30, so it won't be a big change. But Friday, uh, everyone here gets to leave at noon, which is awesome. So uh, I won't be here at the normal time. So maybe I'll do it. I'll have to do it really early because I have my performance review at, I think, 11.30, somewhere around there. So I'll let you all know about the difference, but I just want to give you a heads up uh, so that uh, you're not you're not surprised if I'm not on during my normal time. All right, so I want to check. I want to check some of this stuff out. So once again, I'm assuming, maybe wrongly, that this site is using Material UI. So we inspected it before and we figured out that they weren't actually using it for some parts of it. Actually, now that I look at the code, I'm not I'm not sure that they're using it at all. Let me see. I'm just I have dev tools open on my other screen so uh if you if you want to check it out you can you know just open dev tools you'll be seeing what I'm seeing but um yeah not really sure so maybe I can't do that <laughs> okay um, in any case, let's just grab, what I'd like to do is actually um, make, make components to do what we want them to do. So I don't want to just throw CSS in there. So that's what we did for the last project. And that was okay for the last project because we needed to get a lot done in a short amount of time. For this project, there's not quite as much that needs to get done. Uh, so we already have basically the site that it doesn't really need to change. We just need to turn it from the jumbled mess of jQuery that it is into a React site. But we can basically keep most of the styles the same. So we won't have to worry about that. Uh, it's it's basically just me working on it. This is my project. Uh, the way the layout is right now was already approved by everybody that it needs to be approved by. So I don't have to keep going back and forth to do revisions. So because of all that, I think that we can take the time now to do this uh, in a more proper way and actually create components that will work and that we can reuse and bring forward uh, in our, our future projects. So that's what I'd like to do. Um, okay, I just I just noticed here down in the bottom of the live chat, uh, Juan says, Jesse, I would suggest maybe you can work each feature in a branch to show Git usage too. Actually, that's that's a really good idea. I think I'm going to do that. Uh, so, yeah, actually, I do like I have people of all skill levels that watch this, so I'm sure there's uh, a decent number of people that uh, don't use Git yet or are just really new at Git. So that's a great idea. 
Uh, so we'll get used to making branches and merging and things. That'll be that'll be cool. I will I will do that. Um, Tiffany asks, which course or courses are you taking with Udacity? Um, hey Tiffany, I'm pretty sure that I haven't seen you in live chat before, so thank you, uh, thank you for uh, for watching and joining in. I am taking the React uh, Nano degree right now. I've also done a lot of the uh, front end courses, but just the uh, the free versions. So I will say this about the paid version. Uh, the I normally go for the free versions of everything, uh, but in this case, with the paid version, since you get to keep submitting your projects and get feedback, I'm, I'm like forced to learn a lot more than I normally would. Uh, so I, I think in, it, it can be worth it. So if you don't have somebody else to look at your code, then the paid version is really, really nice uh, because, like I said, I, I thought my app was working like four revisions ago, or like four code reviews ago, and it wasn't. So if I had just been doing a free version, they don't have a free version of the React Nano degree yet, but if, if they had one available and I had been doing that, I would have just moved on and assumed that my app worked. Uh, but now I'm being forced to learn the right way to do it. And it's not just, the feedback that I get is not always just, this is wrong, do it right. Some of it is just suggestions, like this is right, but if you wanna make it even better, you could do it this way. So that's really, really helpful. So I, I think I had said I would give you all updates on how it's going. So that's probably so far the biggest uh, takeaway that I have is that I, I had no experience with code reviews before and I really like them. Uh, I mean, it's frustrating when you get it back and you've done it wrong, but I learn a lot from it. So, uh, so anyway, that's that's my experience thus far. I'll give you an update if something else happens. All right. Let's see. I had some um, some comments about the colors here. Okay, so it's Joseph says looks like the darker color and lighter one. Okay, so let me. Uh, cool. Zach said I can use his color in my my Udacity project. So awesome! I'll do that. Eighty one was your football number. Cool. So you were a receiver. That's usually your receiver number. My number was 14. <laughs> All right, so I think I'd like to grab the lighter color. All right, cool. Uh, Zach says wide receiver, kicker, and punter. Cool, I was right, wide receiver. Yeah, all the, once you get up into the 80s, that's receiver. Yeah, I was um, quarterback and outside linebacker. All right, so let me switch. Actually, here's what I really want to do is I want to use the lighter color for everything. So I don't want to change that active color. I want to change the highlight color. So I have to figure out where that's at. Where's my my menu item all right so I think it talks about the menu items at the bottom of this area override styles Actually, I'm not sure if I can. I'm assuming that this is on hover, so I I don't think I can override it here because that would be an inline style. You can't do hover stuff on inline styles, right? I'm I'm pretty sure you can't do it. 
let me double check this that it is in fact a hover is it not I think I'm on the wrong here we go this is interesting uh, so let me show you what's going on here. Whoa, that's too big. I always do that. Um, all right, so I'm going through here and trying to add uh, the hover. So like over here, I'm just going and clicking hover uh, in DevTools. And none of these are actually making a change. This Maybe it's this one. No. What else could I even put? This one? Okay, so everything here. All right, so let's see. So it's actually. So it's actually not a CSS hover effect, which is that's interesting. I, I just assumed it was. Uh, so it's X, it's a, let me see what changes. Huh. All right, so it looks like the only thing that's changing is just the, the background color does change. So that's really interesting. So I guess we can, I, I really wanted to use like the, the actual, you know, props here. But I guess I could just put it in the CSS file. So I guess we'll just change this. Actually, I am going to have to I am going to figure out have to figure out how to change this because it's it's not I think it's actually changing the color. Like this background color seems like it's part of the state. Let's check out that component for a minute. Actually, forget it. This is a sidetrack. <laughs> this would be something to do later on. I don't want to get sidetracked with this. Uh, it, probably just because I'm really tired, uh, it was easy for me to get sidetracked. <laughs> That's an unimportant thing right now. That can go in the uh, list of things to do later on. Uh, I can I can live with it being a different color just for now and I could always just change it change this to be the same color and that'll be a lot easier 
All right, so let's grab some of the material. Let's see. Let's go here. I was hoping that the GitHub would be uh, in my, my drop down there, but it wasn't. Okay, so let's go to It's a lot easier actually to go to the SAS and see what grid. See what we need. Actually, now that I think about it, the problem I've had before is that it's really hard to just pull part of this since it depends on a lot of uh, variables and other files. So I think I will just go to the CSS then. Okay, so if you're not familiar with SAS, uh, it's a, whoops, wrong spot. Uh, if you're not familiar with SAS, oops. It is a CSS preprocessor, so you can do more than you can do with normal CSS. You can have like variables and some logic in there. Uh, and you can combine like separate files together. And so it's really cool, but um, I, wanted, I want to see this file that's a CSS is what gets produced when you, you know, compile it all uh, to normal CSS. So what I'm going to do is I know Calls the column is what I want. <laughs> I didn't realize there's so many things with call in it. Oh my goodness. There we go. <laughs> I should have searched for a row. Uh, so I want these container classes and everything. And actually, before I do this, let me I just want to check I want to check. I don't really know that much about uh, licenses, so I want to make sure that I uh, give attribution properly or if I'm even allowed to pull out part of this. Okay, it's MIT license. I know enough to know the MIT license is pretty, um, uh, pretty open. So let me see if they actually have a license. There we go. Okay, so basically it seems like I can do whatever I want and use this as long as I keep uh, this this license with it which I don't really see any reason why I couldn't have an MIT license on my project as well if anyone had knows of any good reasons why I shouldn't then uh, let me know now but that's not really a big deal uh, I don't really care if anybody uses any of my stuff okay cool so let's let's do that then let's put a uh, license on our project and then we'll grab this and we should be good and uh, let me know if someone knows more about licenses and um, I'm making a mistake here let me know please in the live chat
Oh, I see. Sebastian said, might be using uh, JS mouse over to change background color. Yeah, that's what I think. I think it's probably using that. That's why I was going to look at the component to see before I, I realized that that was just kind of a waste of time because uh, I had better things to do. All right, so let's... I, I want to do this license thing first because otherwise I'll probably just put it off and never do it. Uh, and I think it'd be cool to show you all uh, how to do this. So there's a really easy way to do a license within GitHub. So, I mean, obviously we could just copy and paste that, which would be really easy, but I'd like to show you this in case you want to use a different license. Uh, where's my site? Resource Center, right? Yeah. Okay, so if we go in here and go to create new file and then type in Hold on. I spell L I C E N. <laughs> no, why can't I spell license on? <laughs> hey, I seriously spelled license correctly last night. <laughs> license, right? No, what? All right, somebody help me out. What is wrong with me? L-I-C-E-N-S-E, -E -E, right? Right? Yeah. All right, what's supposed to happen? Maybe I have to put in caps? What's supposed to happen is that there's something supposed to come up on this side that'll let you just pick a license. Why? This worked last night for me. <laughs> Why is it not working right now? <laughs> Here, refresh this page. There we go. Okay, so this is what's supposed to happen. If you manage to type license correctly the first time, <laughs> you can choose a license template, right? So you click this and you can go in here and pick a license and it'll tell you all kinds of, of things about that license. So you can go through and pick which one you need. So that's what I really wanted to show you because this is pretty cool if you're not sure about it. Uh, you can go to learn more, uh, but this can help you if if you're not exactly sure about your your license. So I'm going to pick the MIT license. See, it already fills in everything for me. It even fills in uh, the year and the um, the name. In this case, it's the name of the organization. Uh, otherwise, like on my on my own GitHub, uh, it's it puts in my name. Uh, so. You have a chance to do. Actually, I want to see full name of copyright owner. I'm going to put my name. Because, so technically, when I started working here, I signed no contract. So um, I pretty much control the code that I write. So there, there's nothing. There's nothing that says that uh, my code I, that I can't use elsewhere, so I'm going to interpret that as I can use it uh, however I want in other projects. And so let's go to review and submit so we can check it out. Here it is, and we have a license file. And I wonder, I wanted that to be .md. Cool. Awesome. And then right from here, um, we can we can if we wanted to create a new branch for this commit and then start a pull request. Actually, let's do that since, uh, like Juan said, it would be cool to get more practice with Git. So 
let's start a new branch uh, for a pull request and then we'll merge this request in. And uh, since I already know what's happening here, like we'll, we'll do it through the GitHub interface uh, and then in the future we'll do them through the command line. Cool, so now we're gonna open a pull request, create license. Uh, I don't think I really need to write anything. That's, we know what that means. And you can see it shows the changes. We've created a new file, so really easy to tell what's going on. And let's create the pull request. Now I can see this pull request. This is pull request number seven. And let's merge it. And there's, there are actually options. So uh, we can merge the pull request, and there'll be a merge commit. And so this just says exactly what's happening. And I'm going to confirm the merge. And then now, if we go back to our local machine, we can run a git pull. And we have our license. All right, so cool. Successful thing number two that we've done today. <laughs> uh, all right, so now I saw something. Sebastian said Material UI actually does have a grid system. So, Sebastian, um, Material. Oh, I just want to let you all know the uh, the live um, the live stream from Instagram has ended. So that that has a one hour time limit. So if you want to check it out, the video is available for twenty four hours after I record it. Um, so Sebastian, if there is a grid system, I I know. I couldn't find one before. I found one with the beta version, but I couldn't find a grid system with the old version. So, uh, am I just am I missing something, or is it just with the beta? Also, Sebastian found out how to edit that that color. Add this to the list item. Hover color. Alexander says, hey from Russia, love your coding sessions, Jesse. Thanks, and uh, thanks for watching. I really appreciate it. Uh, okay, Sebastian is saying grid list. I checked out grid list uh, a few days ago, and I it wasn't what I wanted. I mean, maybe it would get the job done, but it, w it was not what I really had in mind uh, with with the grid system. Uh, let's see, what was I gonna, oh, I was gonna change the, uh, the hover color. So I'm assuming then on here I can change the hover color. Wow. I don't know if anybody has saw that, but have you, have you ever had your, your hands like one key off? Um, I just, I had them one key off and then it just messes up everything. I guess I, oh, I guess see Joseph said as well. I could put it in the theme, uh, but I'm not really going to use these the same way anywhere else. So I think I'll just do it like this for now, assuming that this will work. And what was the color we were using? Let's see if that works. Not yet. 
No. Okay, so Joseph said menu item won't work because it doesn't pass the prop. Okay. So I will need to then put this um, in our theme. Are we even using a theme? Yeah, we made this, right? This FUS theme. Oh, okay. Sebastian said add it to the list item, not the menu item. Actually, I'm not... Yeah, okay, Joseph, that's what I was just thinking. I can't put it on the list item because uh, it's generated uh, by menu item. So anyway, I'm just, I'll, I'll figure that out uh, at a different time. I really wanna move over this, this code from materialize. So where did I have that? Okay, so let's try to grab everything we need. So basically all the column classes. And it'll probably be obvious uh, pretty early on whether or not there are conflicts as far as the class names go. If that happens, we'll figure out what to do. Uh, but maybe it won't happen. Okay. Oh, that's cool. They actually have an Excel class built in. I remember for a project, I made my own Excel classes. Uh, they used to have, um, it was just small, medium, and large. Uh, so, I should have submitted a pull request for that. I could have got this in. Oh, well. <laughs> um, I just didn't have time at the time to really clean it up and submit. So, all right. So, now we have all that. Let's... Let's pull in All right, so would it make I think it would make sense to have a styles folder. So let's do that. So from the command line we can create folders by doing make directory Right, and we can do, so you want this to be within source, and let's call it styles. So now we have that directory, and now we want to create a new file, so we're gonna use the command touch, source, styles, and we'll call this um, materialize grid. Uh, and that's a CSS file. Okay, so now we have the styles folder and we have this materialized grid and then we can put all of our grid styles in here. Right, so everything's in here and we'll save that and then we can pull that in. Uh, oops, I meant, meant to get the app.js. So we can pull that in here in our app.js and import it here and then it will be available for us to use for, for all of our stuff. So if we could see here, we already have an import of a CSS file. So let's just copy that and then import the uh, column classes here. And so what we want 
is to go into the styles folder and then materialize materialize grid okay uh, let's check it out all right so so far nothing weird has happened now we should be able to use the materialize uh, classes so let's go into our home view I'll switch it back up let's go into our home view and try to try to use some of them I just remembered I forgot to use my Pomodoro clock again this is two days in a row so I don't think I'm gonna use it now <laughs> Since I'm this far in, uh, where's oh okay we have views and home. Okay, so within our home view, I want this all to be inside of a container. And then within that container, we're going to have a a row. And then within the row, we'll have columns. And we'll, we'll do S12 medium uh, four. And that should give us our three. Okay. And actually, We don't need that anymore. What do we have? Div, div, div. I'm missing one div. Okay, so we have this, and let's just put. Uh, depending on what the fonts doing with material UI may we may want to bring in that um, that flow text responsive font class for materialize as well because uh, I kind of like that and it would match a lot of what we're doing with other sites so let's just make oops this one three Okay, and save it and see what we have. So obviously I didn't really um, have an error in index. So where is my error? Probably in home, since that's the only thing we changed. Uh, let me see, what have I done? There we go. Line seven. No, I'm jazz. All 
All right, good call, um, Alexander. Thank you. And who else? Uh, Tor Tor yeah, yeah says try return. Awesome. Uh, so. All right, cool. Check that out. So we have our column classes. Let's see if this works. When we go small, yes, great. This don't actually look centered though. What's going on? Let me move this over so we can see the screen. Oh, okay. I see why. It doesn't look centered because these are just uh, right aligned, so that's fine. So this is actually the only one. So this is our container, which is full width uh, with margins, and uh, the margins actually uh, get smaller. Um, they're bit percentage based, but even the percentages themselves change there within media queries. So that's cool. On small screens, the margins are really small, uh, which is what we want. This is our row. This is our columns. These are our columns. Cool. So that is working as we want. Let's throw some cards in here, but let's use the material UI cards. And then that'll be a, a kind of even better test of conflicts when we start intermixing uh, more of the components from material UI. So, let's see, I don't really like that font weight. It's a 400 weight. I think I like 300. Yeah, I like 300 better. Anyway, I'll change that later. I don't want to get sidetracked. All right, let's throw in some cards. So let's go back to our material UI documentation here, and let's look up the cards. Let's make this a bit bigger. So we want a card and we just want I just wanted a really plain card. Let's see. Which one's the most plain? None of them. They don't they don't have just a regular plain card. Alright, so I'll just have to grab this and then take stuff out. Let's grab this card. And probably I'll take out almost all of that stuff. So I don't want the actions. I'll take out the card actions. And do I want a title? Yeah, I think I might want the title. Right now, I think, do I have explanatory text? I do, I think I have a title, text, and then instead of an image, I have an icon. So let's leave the card media. Maybe not, I don't, think, I don't know, I think I wanna leave the card media. How does this look? Yeah, I don't really want it to appear like a separate section. So let's take this out for now. It'll just make it easier. And I don't want the header. Okay, so now we have a much more basic card, which should be good for, uh, for our purposes. And let's pop these cards in here. And then we need to import some things. So let's import all this stuff and we can get rid of the stuff we're not using once we pull it in. So we don't need the card actions, the card header, or the card media. Oops. Okay. Save that and see how it looks.
cool. All right, so we have these cards. And okay, not bad. They need definitely we need to work on our padding. So in um in materialize the cards themselves have the right padding so it usually doesn't happen like this uh, so we'll have to just see if I mean maybe we want them to be closer together I don't I don't think though that doesn't look I think I'd like to have a little bit more padding so other than some you know padding issues this is what we want I mean, obviously, we want them to come down a bit. Uh, we'll probably vertically align. So we might actually grab the um, verti uh, vertical alignment classes uh, as well from Materialize. Yeah. Now, what we can do, so basically, we've pulled in the CSS, and we've tested it, and it pretty much does what we want it to do. What we could do, and what we may end up doing, is making components where we could, you know, have a component that would, let's say, be column. And then you would pass it, you know, what, what you wanted it to be. And then that would end up being these things, you know, but it would be in the form of a component. Uh, and we could do the same thing with row and container if we wanted to. I'm not sure. I don't know if it would be better to make these all components or if it would be better to, to leave someone like this. I kind of, if I had to say, I would say the column is a much better candidate to be its own component than the row and the container uh, just because, uh, you know, the columns, I mean, they can change a lot. They would be uh, decent to be able, you know, pa pass props in and uh, change what you want them to uh, to have. It would also be cool, you know, to change these based on, you know, a change in state. So you could switch up your columns. So it it would then be pretty easy to do something like. I don't know, have a toggle to say you can toggle between like a grid layout and a full width layout, you know, just by clicking the button and then all the button would do would just um, just do a set state. So that would be cool. I, the only place where that might be useful is maybe where we do the, uh, we're going to do the image gallery for the logos. Otherwise, I don't really think we'll need to use something like that. So, I mean, currently we don't have that functionality, so we don't really have to add it in. Okay, I'm going to go to the live chat. Well, first, let me, um, let me copy this because basically this is going to be our layout. So we're just going to do this twice. to see mm -hmm. wow there's a lot of things you can do with cards cool okay cool one thing I definitely want to do with these cards is make sure that they always stay the same height. Uh, so we'll see how, how I want to do that. I've done it before with some Flexbox stuff, which doesn't work. It doesn't work well with uh, the way everything was done in Materialize, but it might work better with this. I'm not sure. Uh, I'll have to look at the um, the markup that's created from the card component. 
Uh, or we can do it by a bunch of media queries setting uh, min heights, which I don't, I'd rather not do it that way. All right, so I'm going to check the uh, live chat really quickly before I commit this in case there's something I should, I should do differently. Uh, and then after that, if this is all good, I'll commit this push it up to GitHub, and then I'll be uh, taking some questions. So if you were uh, just here for the code, probably not going to be too much code uh, left. Uh, so uh, thanks for watching. Uh, if you want to you quit watching now, that's cool. Um, otherwise, if you have questions, put them in the live chat now. Uh, or if you can't stick around, you can put them in the comments below or direct message me on Twitter. Hey Jeremy, how's it going? So Jeremy has joined us in the live chat. Thanks for joining us. Okay, looks like there's no uh, messages related to uh, these cards, but that actually it looks so much better with content there. I don't know about you, but I mean, it I mean, obviously, like this, there needs to be space right there. That looks terrible, but. Actually, having something here makes it look a lot better. And I can't, that font weight really bothers me. I'm definitely going to change that soon. All right, so let's. Oh, actually, I said we were going to make uh, different branches for each thing that we're doing, right? So let's see. I think. For now, since we're at the end, I'm just going to commit this, but then uh, I'm going to try to think out. When I make my Trello cards, I'm going to try to make it a point to make each task in my Trello card a separate branch. And then that'll be cool. So we'll know when we move it to done, at that point, we will merge the branch. Uh, and then we can keep track of things like that. We can also. I think there's a plugin or an add-on in, in Trello to where you can attach uh, GitHub um, issues or pull requests to a Trello card. So let's we'll try that out too. That seems uh, seems like it would be kind of cool to to do. So anyway, for now I'm just going to do a straight commit to the master branch. Also, uh, I had some advice from someone in uh, the comments for YouTube saying that uh, they usually have a dev branch. They do everything on the dev branch, and uh, they uh, the, they leave the master branch basically at a really basic level and only uh, make commits like periodically uh, to the master branch. Uh, so I'm kind of thinking about doing that. So I guess let me know what you think about that. Uh, I think I was understanding what he was saying correctly. I was actually going to try to do it for this stream, but I totally uh, forgot just because of everything else that happened today. All right, so we're going to commit and well, first let's go status, just see what we changed. Okay, cool. So uh, we can't do a regular git commit uh, with the am flag because it won't add this. Okay, so we actually need to add this. So we could add it by name. But since we're going to add all this anyway, uh, at the same time, let's um, let's do git add, and then we can put um, a period, and it'll add everything. So now, if we do a git status, we can see everything's ready. Now we can do a git commit, and this time we don't need to add because we've already added. We can just do the m for the message, and we'll say add. Column classes. Actually, it's more than just the column stuff. JavaScript. Um, would you really call it a grid or is it a column system? I don't know. I'm not really that worried about it because uh, I think we all kind of know what we're talking about when we say a grid system. Um, page layouts. 
Uh, okay. What did we mess up? Home three. Oh, okay. We defined. Oh, I forgot to um, get rid of this. So I think those were the buttons that were used in the action items in the card, and we removed that section, but we never removed that button. So cool. So now let's just, so that commit actually never went through, right? It stopped it before that was committed. So we can just press the up button on our keyboard and it'll bring up that same thing and we can just hit enter again and run it again. It should work this time, assuming we didn't make any other mistakes and it did. Now we can do a git push and all right, now it's on GitHub. Okay, so now we're, we're good and doesn't matter what happens to our computer, everything is on GitHub. And uh, now I'm gonna check out the live chat. So let me uh, scroll up a bit. And let's see, I wanna try to get everybody's questions. If I happen to not get to your question, uh, just send me, you know, send me a message and I'll try to get to it. And I know some of you have sent me stuff, so either in the comments or um, on Twitter. And um, I've tried to at least get back to everybody with, with something, even if it's like, hey, I'll check this out later. So uh, I've, just, I've been really busy lately between my class and, and work and um, everybody's birthdays this past weekend. So uh, I, I haven't forgotten about you. I'll try to get to it. Uh, when I can. Although now I'm going to be even more busy with uh, my my client's site, my client's database crashing. Um, but I'll do my best. Okay, so open comment says anyone working on Drupal eight? Uh, actually, no, I'm not working on anything with Drupal eight now. Uh, I did briefly try it out. Uh, but no, I applied to speak at a Drupal conference and talk about how you can use the Drupal API with React, uh, but I didn't hear back from them. So I don't know when they closed that, uh, but I didn't get anything. So guessing I'm not going to get into that conference. So if I did get accepted, then I was going to look up more about Drupal. But basically, it's very similar to using the WordPress API. So that's why I uh, I uh, applied to speak there. Uh, Fred says, hi, I need a job. Um, Fred, if you're, uh, if you're looking for a job, um, if you, um, if you send me a tweet, so like if, if you're on Twitter, put in a tweet like what kind of job you want and what your qualifications are and then tag me in it and then I'll retweet it. And um, I don't have a lot of followers uh, but most of the people that follow me are in you know the the tech industry so they might know someone or know something so uh, otherwise I can't really help you uh, about getting a job. I'm not really in a position uh, to give out jobs at this point. Uh, but if any of you watching are, uh, get in touch with Fred. Uh, Abdi says, hi, hey, how's it going? Uh, Nathaniel says, I had to leave early yesterday. Can you let me know what I missed? I don't think we did. I think we spent most of the second half of the stream just going over questions. So I don't think I actually coded anything. Oh, okay, I see. Yeah, Patrick said I, I rolled everything back. Yeah, that's that's true. I did. Um, I couldn't get it. <laughs> couldn't get the beta to work.
Oh, okay. When when I was talking about uh, my GitHub branch, and I was glad that I didn't have errors on it, Juan said, uh, I don't think it's bad to push a branch with errors to GitHub. Uh, as long as it is not master, it might be fine. Yeah, I can kind of see that, uh, especially if you needed help with those errors and you're working on a team, of course you would want to push it so that they could help. So, uh, yeah, I guess that's not really a big deal now that I think about it. So, yeah, thanks for that. That kind of made me think about it differently. Blake said, I'm loving uh, these live streams. Awesome. Uh, I'm glad you're loving the streams. Thanks for watching and uh, participating in the live chat. Uh, Fred asks, hey, do you use Python in your projects? I, I've never used Python in a project for a client. I, uh, I used, I took the intro to computer science course from Udacity and they use Python in that course. So I did some Python with that, but honestly, I didn't even finish the course. So I didn't do anything really advanced with Python, but I kind of like Python. It was really easy um, to work with. It was cool. Like a lot of it was, uh, the syntax was kind of easy to write. Daniel says, hi, thank you for the, the live. Uh, you're welcome. Thanks for watching and joining in the live chat. Okay, Sebastian says, there's no need to add a general theme when using Material UI. If I only want to um, just apply something to a component, uh, because if I added uh, theme uh, to the root, I'd have to add all the different customizations to the theme file. Um, and I'm assuming that's for the beta because obviously we're, we are using a theme file right now uh, for this version. So, but that's good to know if I use the beta later on, or if any of you are planning on using the beta, um, not really a need to do a global theme uh, if, if you really don't need to. Okay, about halfway through the live chat now. Okay, so we had some, um, some of you recommending uh, some themes. Uh, so uh, skeleton theme, Patrick says getskeleton.com. I've heard about that theme, I have not used it. And then uh, Harshit says, Semantic UI is also great and it has React bindings too. Cool. Uh, Open Comments asks, is there a React project uh, one day one video? It looks like this is React project two and how many days did project one go? <laughs> too many days. <laughs> Uh, project one went, so I, for this project, I started doing like the days because I think that'll be easier for people who want to watch later on. Uh, and it's easier for me. So for the first project, I was trying to describe in the title of the video, what I was going to do. Now I'm just going to put that in the description and not the title. The title is just going to say, uh, what day it is and what project it is. It, if, if, Maybe if I can fit some little descriptive thing in there, I will, but I think that'll be a little bit more helpful to keep track of everything because uh, this playlist is going to end up being huge and have lots of different projects. So I think it'll be better like this. So if you want to go back to project one, day one, you have to actually go to my YouTube channel and the links in the, the description for this video. 
uh, and find the video that's called Building a Website as Fast as I Can. And if you start with that one and watch there, I think there's maybe two or three of those on my channel. And then I started streaming for Free Code Camp. Uh, and the rest of them are all in the Live Coding with Jesse playlist, uh, all in, in order there. So uh, it's a little bit confusing for that, but hopefully it'll be a much easier uh, system of naming uh, from here on out. Oh, I see. Patrick pretty much said what I just said, so thanks, Patrick. Uh, Sebastian says, I have some issues with my PC. For some reason, opening tabs on Chrome and Firefox slows down my PC. Uh, video and audio are desynced over time in YouTube. Don't know what to do. Might have to reinstall Windows 10 to see what's causing the issue. Happens to a friend too, but worse. Um, Sarah says, have you tried reinstalling Chrome or Firefox? Sebastian installed Firefox only to see if it happens. Um, Yeah, that's uh, I had that happen on my PC, but it was a long time ago. I don't know if I ever really found a solution for that either. So I'm not really sure what was causing it. I remember looking it up, but I don't. It's been years ago, so I don't really remember what I found out. So sorry, I can't help you more. Um, if I wanted to be a jerk I would just say like buy a Mac <laughs> but I'm, I'm not I'm not gonna say that <laughs> I'm, I'm not like a Mac only guy either I, I have PCs and uh, a Chromebook and Linux servers uh, so they all have their their pros and cons Oh, Sebastian says controversy. That's not football. Okay, yeah, so for for all the non-American people, and I guess Canadian, because they have football too, or at least American-style football, when we were talking about football, we did not mean what everyone else calls football, that we call soccer. So I should say that uh, Zach uh, and I played American football. That's what they call it, right, in the rest of the world, I'm pretty sure. Sorry, I've never been out of the United States, so my knowledge of everywhere else is all secondhand. Um, so yes, we uh, I did not play soccer. So when I was growing up, soccer wasn't really a thing uh, where I was at. So I played American football. <laughs> Sorry if I offended anyone uh, in Europe or, or elsewhere. Pretty much the rest of the world is like, calls soccer football, I think. Oh, Emmanuel said at, at some, this was a while ago, sorry I didn't uh, see this and respond to it. Uh, Emmanuel says the codes are blurry. Uh, so, yeah, sorry about that. Uh, maybe um, in terms of my connection, it was it was really good. It was over 5,000 kilobits per second the whole time. So it should be okay. Uh, it's possible that somewhere between you and I, the connection is slowing down. Uh, or as Sarah mentions, uh, you could uh, try changing the video settings. Um, sometimes that happens to me. Although I try to set it to auto, uh, or I try to set it to be HD all the time, it always reverts to auto on YouTube. And so even when I know I have a good connection, sometimes it'll start me out at a really low quality and I have to manually change it. 
Although sometimes it corrects itself. Oh, one says uh, that you there's choose a license.com. So I showed how to do the license through GitHub, but if, if you uh, would like to see a different uh, place where you can get information on licenses, you can use choose a license.com. I've never been there, so that's not an official endorsement. I'm just saying what Juan said. Uh, MFC88, thank you for spelling out license properly for me. I think I've said this before, but it's crazy how much uh, I misspell when I'm live streaming and I normally can spell it fine. I mean, I'm not going to say I'm a great speller. Obviously, like autocorrect has ruined me and I don't even bother spelling things properly anymore. Uh, but. <laughs> I normally can type and spell pretty well, but not whenever I'm live. Oh, okay, David said you can do the same thing, all right, in terms of adding the, the license uh, by um, going into the Insights tab. Actually, I don't think I've ever done that. Let's check it out. Insights. Where can I? Okay, cool. So from the Insights tab, you can add all right, so we do have a readme, we have a license, we have no code of conduct or guidelines for co contributing. So maybe we should add these in a future stream. Uh, that would be cool to have this kind of properly built out, uh, especially since we, we are getting uh, contributions. So yeah, maybe we'll do that. Thanks for that. I never realized you could, you could click that. And Juan says there's also an option to choose a license when you create the project in GitHub. So I usually just skip that because I'm always like, when I start a project, I'm either not sure what it's going to be for sure, or I'm in a hurry. And uh, but that would probably be a better thing to do. It would just be pick the license right off the bat and not worry about it. Oh, Jordan uh, said, uh, "What would I miss?" And that was like at least a half an hour ago. So <laughs> sorry for not answering then. Uh, basically, we were just kind of uh, changing the title and the color of uh, the active page in the side nav. We added a license, we copied over some styles from materialize. And then I think at that point you were already here, so you saw the rest of it. So didn't miss much. I went over um, uh, pull request too. <laughs> Mobbin said that indentation gave me cancer. <laughs> was it when? Um, I think when I was working on this, the indentation was really crazy. So I don't worry about it anymore because I know that it's all going to get fixed every time I commit. But yeah, sometimes it just looks crazy. Uh, someone asks, what's a, what's a good CSS framework besides Bootstrap? Uh, Blake says, getskeleton.com. Wants his foundation. Um, oh, so Skeleton evidently does not have a CDN. Uh, I I like um, Materialize as an alternative to Bootstrap, uh, but if you're going to use React, uh, you may not want to go with Materialize because a lot of stuff's done through jQuery and you don't really want to manipulate the DOM with jQuery if you're using React. Okay, so um, it looks like some people use Foundation uh, as a framework. Also, uh, Joseph 
says I'm trying out semantic UI in my next project. Okay, Maubin says uh, branches, this is where we're talking about doing separate branches. This branches only really make sense if you have to work on different things uh, parallelly. Is that is that a word, parallelly? Parallelly. I probably would have said in parallel. Now I'm, I'm probably going to have to look that up. <laughs> I want to know if that's a word, and if so, I'll just start using it. Um, uh, Alexander says, Jesse, what carousel would you recommend to use with React.js? Um, let's see. I don't think I've used... So I have used the materialized carousel with React.js, but I wouldn't recommend doing that because, as I said, you don't usually want to manipulate the DOM. So um, I'm not sure. Did I use... I wonder, now I wonder if there's some sort of carousel that comes with this. It doesn't look like it. Okay, yeah, I have no recommendations uh, for React carousels because I've I've not used one the proper way, at least with, uh, with React. So uh, sorry about that. If anyone else has used a carousel with React that's actually a React component and does things the proper way, uh, then uh, please put it in the live chat. Okay, one says, I like the master and dev branches scheme. You can use tags for releases too. Okay, cool. I'll, um, I'll, I'll try my best to remember that and, uh, and actually get that going uh, for, for the live stream tomorrow. Blake asks, what do you guys think about Jekyll? Alexander thinks Jekyll is awesome. Uh, Blake says, I'm still a noob, so should I wait and see how it works and everything? Um, yeah, I've I have not used Jekyll before, but I've seen videos on it, and um, I, I think it looks really interesting and cool. So, um, Alexander says I'm still a noob too. You can check Dev Tips channel here on YouTube and see how Jekyll works. Yeah, actually, I think I I think I've watched the Dev Tips videos on Jekyll. So, uh, I like the Dev Tips channel. Uh, I think it's um, uh, Travis does the videos. I think he does a really good job, uh, and uh, you, you learn a lot and they're fun to watch too so yeah check that out to learn more about Jekyll um, one says I work with Drupal 8 right now okay cool so I think we were I'd gone back and someone asked about Drupal 8 so one says working with Drupal 8 uh, that's cool we have uh, I'm only if I use a CMS I normally use WordPress but we do have some things built uh, some sites that I don't work on directly, uh, but we have some sites here at the university that are built with Drupal. I've worked with it a little bit in the past. Uh, Yosef says, uh, hi Jess, wonder how much you get paid for a monthly basis. Um, I don't, let's see. I was about to show you my timesheet uh, on on air, but then I thought about it, and I I, <laughs> I thought I'd better not, just in case like there's some personal information. Like I don't, I don't know what's on that screen. Maybe it has my social security number and everything. So I'm gonna do it on my other screen now, <laughs> cause I don't remember what I make in a month, but I will tell you in a few seconds. So I'm actually a big proponent of not keeping uh, salary information secret. Uh, so I think normally that works against employees and uh, it benefits the employers more. Uh, so I think we would all be better off if salary information were pretty available. The only time that it could potentially hurt an employee is if you're going to get a new job and uh, your employers realize that you don't make that much and so they think they can get away with offering you less. Other than that situation, uh, I think normally it's better. So let me go to my, on my other screen, I'm gonna find the information and then I'll let you know. All right, so 
every month after they take taxes out and insurance and all that other stuff that get taken out of my paycheck, I make about $2,500. So I'm not sure uh, if that's a lot or not a lot. I, in my, um, the, my area of the United States is pretty economically depressed. So that's, that's enough for me to pay all my bills and support my wife and four children. Uh, but in a lot of areas, like in big cities, that would, that would be nothing. That, that might not even cover rent. Uh, one says, I push to GitHub even if it has errors just in case. You never know, maybe your laptop burns. Yeah, that is, that's another good point. Uh, Yosef says, I really love your live coding because it, it keeps me motivated. Well, awesome. Uh, I really appreciate when you all, I know there, there have been some other really positive comments uh, today in in the live chat. I really do appreciate that. So uh, um, I don't get tired of hearing that. So <laughs> uh, because, I mean, honestly, like with the streams, I, there are good days and bad days. There are days when things go really well, and then there are days when I feel like uh, I've done nothing right. So the positive feedback helps me to want to keep going it. So uh, I actually really do look forward to the streams right now. And everybody's been, like 99% of every comment I've gotten has been positive. So uh, I, I don't intend to stop doing these streams anytime soon uh, unless something beyond my control happens and I, I have to stop. Oh, Patrick says pure CSS looks good if you want to include just the functionality you need. Okay, that's cool. Uh, let's see, Lei Tuan An, I'm, I'm not exactly sure I pronounced that, I'm sorry. It says you can try to use a styled component. Okay, cool. Yeah, actually, and Patrick says I did, so I did use the styled components in my last project, so. Uh, I actually I liked it. I think that's really useful. Juan says, "Yeah, we do. We call it American football in Spanish." Okay, cool. That's what I thought. I thought it was uh, American football. I wonder how it came to be that we called two different sports the same thing. Uh, I don't. I don't understand. I don't know the history of how that happened. <laughs> Oh, okay, Joseph. I see. Joseph put in some uh, some CSS to change uh, the active uh, div. So cool. Thank you. Uh, J Rex asks, "What programming language did you use uh, back end?" So at this site <laughs> for the last project, um, it was one server used. JavaScript used Node, and then for another server we used PHP. Uh, so the content management system was WordPress on one server running PHP, and then the other server was React running Node.js. For this project, it's up, it's going to be React and Node.js, and then I don't think we're even going to use a content management system. Uh, we'll see. I haven't decided for sure what I want to do. Depending on how much time I have for this, I'm like kind of thinking about maybe either trying out one of the content management systems that runs on node or um, just trying out you know trying to do a database like maybe like MongoDB or something like that uh, just working with it so uh, I'll have to see like how what other projects are coming up and how important they are to get done I might not have time to work with that Emilio says, hi Jesse, taxes take a lot from you in the US, but it is definitely a good salary globally, I would say. Okay, cool. Yeah, I know it's it's pretty, it's hard to compare, um, you know, salaries for our different places. Uh, actually, the best thing I've ever seen for that is called the Big Mac Index. I don't know if you ever heard about that, but it basically just tells you how much it costs to buy a Big Mac from McDonald's all over the world. And then, like, that's 
that's a, uh, the index, you know, that's the um, a good measure, I guess. <laughs> so, I mean, really, like economists actually use that. Uh, so, other than that, it is kind of hard to compare. Uh, let's see. Albino CSS says, I really appreciate you doing this. Could you make an uh, isomorphic app uh, tutorial? Um, yeah, I, I mean, I've said this a lot, and I'm sorry I haven't been able to do it, uh, but I really do want to make some tutorials, uh, like pre-record them and put them on my channel. And um, I'd like to do a tutorial using React or Next.js, which will allow you to very easily make an isomorphic uh, app. Yosef says, thank you for your honesty. Yeah, no problem. Like I said, I'm, I'm pretty open about salary stuff. So, um, and my salary, it's not like, it's, uh, I mean, there, there are people that make doing the same thing I do and make a lot more. And I'm sure there are people doing the same thing that I do that make less too. Uh, but I can pay the bills and support my family. So that's, that's really what matters. I mean, I'm sure everybody could always say they wish they had more, but you know, at the end of the day, uh, you know, I, I have it. I have enough to survive on. So, and I like what I do. Uh, Emilio says here in Guatemala, average front end programmer makes around one thousand uh, dollars for forty hours a week. Uh, okay. Cool. That's interesting. I know there's a big. At least I've read before that there's a big difference in what developers get paid in different countries. So like right now in the United States, developers get paid a lot compared to other jobs. But I've heard that in some countries it's not like that. Uh, so, you know, it, for whatever reason in the United States right now, they need more developers. Uh, so they're willing to pay uh, a higher, higher amount. All right, Joseph said, I'm changing a Wi-Fi sign-up portal from PHP MySQL to React uh, SQL Lite 3 or React Mongo. That's really cool. I'd like to see if, if that's, Joseph, if that's a project that could be made uh, available on GitHub, that'd be really cool to see. So uh, send me a link um, if, if you're, you're able to put that on GitHub, and uh, I, I would be really interested in seeing it. Uh, Albino CSS says, you are a really great tutor, and I know that this is time consuming, time that you can spend with your child, but it would be great to get some clarifications uh, in your style. Yeah, um, yeah, like I said, I, I do really want to do some more stuff, so you know, we'll see how it goes. Uh, I actually, um, I mean, I don't have nearly enough subscribers yet to even think about getting money from YouTube, but maybe one day I can justify like doing more video. Right now it's just hard to justify and like go home and say to my wife like, hey, I'm gonna take a couple hours and make YouTube videos and not get anything out of it. Uh, so, but if I could say like, you know, hey, I, I could potentially get like ad revenue or something, you know, then that would be justifiable, you know, for me to say like, it's, it's almost like a second job. And, um, then, then it, it, at least I could say, you know, I'm, I'm providing some more money for my family. Uh, and then it might be more doable for me to produce stuff more regularly. Uh, but for right now, I'm, you know, that's, that's like probably a long, long way off. Um, if, if it ever happens, but I will try to make some tutorials when I can. Albano CSS says we get uh, seventeen hundred dollars monthly uh, in Croatia for forty hours a week. Okay, cool. That is cool. I really, I'm really interested in what people get. Um, uh, Jrex says, are you working as freelance or in house or something? Yeah, I work at a university, uh, so I'm a full time uh, front end developer for for a university, and then I do some work on the side, like freelance work. Uh, but 
I, I don't really like to do a lot unless it's a project I'm really interested in or I'll make a lot of money off of it because <laughs> I'm, I'm pretty busy. So I'd, I'd rather not take up more of my time uh, than I need to. Albino CSS says, okay, you need wife permission <laughs> and the frowny face and then the smiley face. Yeah, I mean, like, uh, basically, because I couldn't, if I were to want to take more time to do that, that would mean that I wouldn't be able to watch the kids and I would have to ask my wife to watch all four of our kids. And then she wouldn't have time to do any of the things that she would like to do. You know, normally when I get home from work, I, I watch the kids, right? So, um, uh, otherwise, she would have them all day, every day with no breaks. So that's what I mean when I say I'd have to be able to justify that. So uh, if if I went home and said, "Hey, wife, why don't you <laughs> why don't you watch the kids for another couple more a couple hours, you know, with no break, so I can just go make YouTube videos, right?" Then then uh, that wouldn't sound as good. But if I could say like, "Hey, I'm gonna make." A bunch of money off of ads on YouTube if I put out you know three or four videos a week uh, then it might make her a little bit more happy and she could uh, so you see I don't does that make sense that it would just be I don't know if, if you're married maybe you you understand like says she got kids like it would be uh, it, it just seems like to me that uh, it's it's a lot easier to make the case for me to, to do more and uh, in terms of work, if the the payoff is is greater, so <laughs> anyway, okay, this <laughs> understand. Um, four, yes, I do have four kids. Yeah, so from eight years old down to nine months old, so, and I have two girls and two boys. All right, so I've gotten to the end of the live chat, and um, that's about. Yeah, that's over a two-hour video at this point. Uh, but um, if you have any any other questions, you know, feel free to reach out to me on Twitter. Uh, oh, okay, there's one more question in here. Uh, JREC says, how long have you been working as a dev? Uh, at the university, it's been about two years, but uh, before that, I was freelance for about three years, I think. So uh, all in all, about five years, like that I was seriously a developer. I mean, I I did some websites here and there before that, but I wouldn't say that I was a serious you know developer uh, until about like five five years ago or so. And I really well, I wouldn't would not have called myself like a true developer that first year. I was really just learning a lot uh, oh aim high is here uh, yeah sorry you're you're too late we're about to end so you can catch the um, uh, uh, the recording it'll be available yeah and uh, and give me an update on how the job is going too you can um, uh, message me on on Twitter or something so um, I'm interested Okay. All right. So for real this time, I'm going to be done. So thank you so much for watching. Tomorrow the stream is probably going to be a little bit later, maybe around 2.30, 3 o'clock. Um, and Friday, it's going to be really early. So I'll let you know about that time tomorrow. And um, have a great day. I'll see you all uh, tomorrow.